Hello everyone, I'm Tommy with Studio Sense and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to feature six fragrances that I feel like are kind of dark horse fragrances. What that means is there's so many fragrances out there, it's not uncommon or surprising that many fragrances get overlooked or that fragrances garner a lot more attention than do some others. But does that mean that those fragrances that are kind of pushed to the wayside or don't get much attention are not worthy of your attention? No, that's not the case. And today I'm gonna to prove that by showing you six fragrances that should be on your radar if they're not already. When we return, we're gonna talk about that and more, so stay tuned. Hey guys, welcome back. So today we're gonna to be talking about six fragrances that I feel are a little bit overlooked. I feel like the price that they're going for right now, they do what they do really well. In fact, I'm wearing one of them today. So I wanted to kind of give them a little bit of the limelight because nobody really talks about them that much. Now, all of these share the very modern note of Ambroxan. Let's go ahead and jump right into our list. The very first of our six that we're gonna to feature today is from the Fragrance House of Trasardi, and it is called Trasardi Reflesso Blue Vibe. Got the tea and the lid there. I really like the bottle, not only because of the colors, you've got a kind of a neon yellow or green against a dark navy blue, and it's almost like a rubbery feel, like a hard plastic, but it's got a grip to it. It's like a ribbed bottle. Now this particular fragrance is really hard to find right now. If you go to Fragrance X, Fragrance Net, uh, Perfume.com, most of those discounters are completely out of, of this fragrance. However, FragranceBuy.ca, a Canadian discounter actually has this. I did put that link in the description below in case you're interested in, in checking this out because this one is getting a little bit harder to find as a limited release run. Veronique Nyberg created this in 2019. A lot of people are just now picking up on how good this fragrance really is. This fragrance in the top features rum, it's got Dovana, Yuzu, which is a fairly new note as well in fragrances. Very bright, almost like a a meteor side of bergamot. You've got geranium, hazelnut, and artemisia in the mid. You've got Italian leather, you've got some woods in there, tobacco absolute, and of course ambroxan in the base. Neon green aperture, which you know I've talked about recently how much I like that, especially in a dimly lit room, how you can see. Now this atomizer is also a what's called a metered or measured atomizer where you can do just a little bit or you can do a lot. This fragrance is off the charts when it comes to its uniqueness. It's not trying to smell like anything else. It really does stand on its own. Citrusy, slightly boozy, that, that Devana in there which makes it almost like an orange kind of afterglow effect. Rum, Devana, Uzu, and a little bit of Tobacco Absolute and Ambroxan to darken it down and bring it into that arena of modern man's fragrance. Our next fragrance is gonna be the one that's gonna surprise you because you're gonna think, wow, why are you saying that nobody's talking about this or that nobody appreciates this? But it is a 2012 release. That's one reason, okay? It came out several years ago and it is Prada Luna Rasa. Yes, the flagship fragrance. I'm gonna take this weird white protective cap off. Prada is a really nice design house. It does get a lot of attention. Prada Loam, Prada Luna Rossa Carbon, Prada Luna Rossa Black, the two newer flankers, they get a lot of attention. But the Prada Luna Rossa itself, and even Sport, probably gets more attention than the OG. It has that original DNA that the other ones are, are taking and kind of forming more of a derivation too. Daniela Andrie created the OG back in 2012. In the top, you've got Bitter Orange and Lavender Absolute. You've got Clary Sage and Nana Mint in the mid. You've got Ambrette Seed Absolute and then the Ambroxan. This fragrance performs wonderfully. It's an attention getter, all weather type of fragrance. You can wear year round, primarily of course in a little bit warmer weather, spring and summer. Got a little bit of bitter orange in the opening there. You've got that ambrette seed, which gives it kind of a balsamic powdery feel. And then you've got the ambroxan, which gives it that modern man's fragrance smell and feel and appeal. This is the soapy without the soft. It's more of a masculine, manly, hard hitting, fresh, clean sensation and feel. And it's got that the earmarks of a signature scent. Our next Dark Horse fragrance is from the house of Alfred Dunhill, and it is Dunhill Century Blue. Dunhill Century Blue is an eau de parfum concentration. It's cubed, but then it has, of course, the circle in it. So it's kind of like a circle. It's a geometric circle within a square. So it's got a neat magnetic cap on the very top that just sits on there like that, literally twists and it pops right off. Now, when I said earlier that I was wearing one of these fragrances, this is the fragrance that I'm actually featuring today. 
Super, super refreshing. Lightly briny, reminds you of the sea, that lightly salty. It's more like a beachy vibe, only in a city. Like it's an urban beach, <laughs> if that makes sense. It's just this white sands beach and then you, you look literally an inch to your left and it's all cityscape. So kind of, that's where this feels like it fits in and is finds its appropriation within that juxtaposition of beautiful beach, water, sands, white sands, and then urban city skyscapes. You got Italian bergamot, black pepper, and mandarin orange in the top. You got ginger, orris, or iris butter and neroli in the mid of the heart. Sea salt, patchouli, oak moss, and ambroxan in the base. It is reminiscent of light blue O intense. I feel like it has almost every bit of the intensity that that does. So that's why I feel like this is overlooked because it is a generic blue fragrance, but it's as an eau de parfum sits on your skin all day long. It projects really well and has just an all round signature scent or year round fragrance, Dunhill Century Blue. Balik is one of those fine designer fragrance houses that is just on the edge of niche when it comes to the quality of many of their fragrance, and Lalique Linsomi is no less the case. Fabrice Pellegrin created this master perfumer, was released in 2016. Kind of a boozy but masculine fragrance. It's got bergamot, basil, rum in the top with a heart of clary sage, lavender, and black pepper. Resting on a base of patchouli, a Roman chemical called clear wood, which is just a woody, it replicates woody, extremely dense woody notes, vetiver, and moss. This is a really unique presentation. If you look at the top of the lid, it's a combination of birds. Similar bird-like design in like a briar pattern on the sides of, of both sides of the bottle. Really dig this presentation. It's got a really nice heavy lid. This is definitely one of those all-weather wear fragrances that is very similar to Trasardi. Extremely unique. It's so ultra masculine. It's a combination of that basil and clary sage mixed with that woody aroma chemical that just really makes, I, I hate saying the word aroma chemical, it kind of takes the romance out of the actual notes itself, but I'll just say woods. So this projects really well off the skin. Performance is great with this. But like many Lalique fragrances that lends itself to dressing up, it's got kind of an upscale dressed up feel, kind of semi-formal or formal feel to it. It wears those shoes just equally as comfortable as it does casual shoes. And that's what makes Lalique Linsomi so universally hyper versatile and unique. You can wear it in warmer weather. It's very, very spicy, so it's equally at home in cooler weather. It's extremely inexpensive. It's definitely one of those fragrances that's a dark horse fragrance that doesn't get a lot of hang time or air time, but it's worth remembering. Our next fragrance that doesn't get a lot of hang time, uh, it, I think when it came out, it got a little bit, a fair bit. It was released in 2017. Alberto Maria and Aurelien Guichard worked together to create this in the name of Salvatore Ferragamo, and it is in the Womo line, Casual Life. This particular fragrance, it's built into the word itself as to how you wear it. It is definitely a casual wear fragrance, but it does retain such a fine quality about it for a designer fragrance. In the top, you've got lemon zest, you've got violet leaf and a sweet cardamom. With a heart of iced coffee, you've got that ambroxan, and to make it glow and last, that geranium note. Resting on a warm and comfortable base of cashmere wood, white cedar wood, and musk. This is one of my favorite casual wear fragrances to grab whenever I'm unsure what to wear because again it's one of those that kind of recedes into the background in lieu of other fragrances but this is a great pick especially for the price you can get this for just above 30 bucks at most discounters of course I've complained in the past about the big lid and how hard it is to get your finger up and how it spits like that when you don't want it to first world problems though really it's not a big deal sprays a really good bit of juice. The atomizer is actually quality, even though it is a little bit awkward. This smells like your favorite day off from work where you get to do nothing, which is always fun to do nothing. It's like your most favorite comfortable outfit that you can put on and wear. And that iced coffee note puts it just on the edge of gourmand without being an actual gourmand fragrance. This retains that draw and that allure that Every man's fragrance tries to attain, definitely does it successfully in a very casual way. Not a lot of YouTube reviewers talk about it. It's really not that old. I mean, again, it's 2017. It does contain that modern spin of ambroxan. So if you're looking for something a little bit more modern and you've not tried out casual life, I highly recommend it. 
which is a perfect segue into our next fragrance because it's actually the brother of Casual Life. And it came out in 2019. Alberto Maria was also involved in this, but instead of Aurelien Guichard, his partner was Marie Salomane. And they created Urban Feel by Salvatore Ferragamo. Now this came out again in 2019, so it's a relatively new release. You know how when you're going on a trip and you start seeing the scenery around you change and it just makes you excited because you know you're getting closer to your destination? Like taking a trip to the Colorado mountains or the Adirondacks or you know wherever you want to go when it comes to like beautiful trees and beautiful mountains, the Appalachian Trail, which I'm close to actually, which is appropriate because this is very pine. It's got, it's very uh, terpenic, turpentine or astringent or like a cleaner smell, but not in a negative connotation. Top notes of sage, sea salt and bergamot. You've got cumin, you've got driftwood and cedar wood in the heart. It's resting on a base of ambroxan, labdanum, frankincense and patchouli. extremely oriented towards woods. So if you like deep woods, foresty, slightly resinous, astringent woods, you'll really like this fragrance. It does perform really well. It's a wholly casual fragrance. It's a perfect pickup if you're looking for one of those dark horse, unique alternate options for designer fragrance. Salvatore Ferragamo's Urban Feel. Guys, that's it for my six fragrances that are forgotten but not gone. If you have any of these fragrances and if you enjoy them, let me know what you think about them in the comments below. If you think there are other other fragrances out there that need and deserve attention that don't get the limelight that they deserve let me know thank you so much for stopping by and checking out my video today as always thank you so much for your support on my channel i'm tommy with Sense, and i'll see you tomorrow